you think? He made this like a few months ago for me. I love it. I like it. Yeah. Welcome, 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 welcome. You better get started shortly. Can't wait. I've been waiting for this one, brother. I've been waiting for this one. Welcome to another episode of Will Call, ladies and gentlemen, where your team, your sports, your favorite players are the star. You are the focus of the show. My guy, welcome to the show, brother. How you doing? Angelo, what's I'm up, good. brother? DeLeo. I'm good, man. Thanks for having me on. I'm looking good. forward to this, man. This is going to be a lot of fun. I know. We had just, um, you know, I've been looking forward to this some, quite some time, you know, had to start off the new year with you. So I'm glad if the calendar fell right for us, you know, it's, uh, you know, I've been waiting for a quite long time. You know, just um, you know, we have, we share some of the similar teams, and we're gonna definitely get to those shortly. But um, you know, I just we're just gonna just not just address the elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I know why everybody's coming in. We're just gonna we're just gonna talk about it. Just um, the Jets. I mean, you, I know you represented them, but you're not. <laughs> I know you're not too thrilled with them. I know you're not I, too thrilled. That's <laughs> not true. Thing. That's not true. That's that's not true. <laughs> Is it, uh, oh, partially. It's partially. <laughs> uh, Alex thirteen white says fins up. Hey, hey, listen, fins up. I mean, they got a chance, but listen. I mean, listen. But <laughs> as an Italian American, as much as I'm a Jets fan, I gotta respect Dan Marino. Oh, icon, icon, <laughs> man, absolute icon. I mean, just uh, he's an unbelievable talent. Um, but you got you guys have unbelievable talents all over the field historically, and uh, but unfortunately. Um, you know, the Jets is going to miss the playoffs for the 12th consecutive season, which is the longest active streak in the league. Um, what's, what's more disappointing for me, looking from afar, 30,000-foot view, is the fact that uh, they have so much promise coming into the year. Like, just coming into the year for one, you know, Zach Wilson in year two, uh, the front office has been excellent, just building around the quarterback. You get off to a hot start, defense has been phenomenal. But they just laid an egg offensively throughout the stretch, and that just was just a, a catalyst for the demise. Just, um, I know you had told me before the show, uh, you know, Joe Flacco. Uh, you wanted to talk about uh, how it, and I, I quote, "It makes me want to kick my TV screen." <laughs> it, it, it truly does. For I mean, if it's one of those things where he's a Jersey guy, it's going to be his last game ever. He's going to play it in a Jet uniform. I can live with that. As a guy from New Jersey, I'm fine with it. But in the same vein, you paid Zach Wilson all this money as your number two pick. He's just sitting there. Okay. I mean, if you if we're gonna stink it up on offense, might as well stink it up with the guy we're paying all the money to. Yeah. You know, like, it can't I get mean, any worse. It can't get any worse. I mean, it just but I mean, you your defense gives you know we give up 20 points in a game and we lose. Like, what are you supposed to do? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's just uh, it's, it's it's fascinating to me because um, you see the body language with, that they come with with like my thing is just with uh, Zach Wilson when you when you get into a situation where well first off I want to tell uh, you know, brother uh, Daily Doolittle want to say uh, happy birthday I want to tell him happy birthday real quick happy birthday Dallas brother happy birthday and Max uh, Cravina sixteen uh, you had a question. Send it to me in the, in, the, uh, in the comments. We'll get to it. Send it to me in the comments. But yeah, just uh, address your point, brother. Just the fact with Zach Wilson is just when you have your teammates, that's you, brother, the GOAT. Just when you have your teammates making t shirts of the backup quarterback, chanting him on, cheering him on, you can't, I, I just don't see how you recover from that. And, these, and I've heard NFL players on TV the last several weeks. That's hard to rebound from. That is so it, difficult. 
I'm I'm 100% with you, but my thought is it it doesn't you can't get any lower at this point. You can't no. You know, and if like coach is saying that they're not giving up on Zach Wilson, they're gonna they're all in on him for next season. You know, he wants them to work in the off season. You know, all the other coaches. If it's just coach speak, it's just coach speak. But if you're so far behind this young guy, why are we starting Joe Flacco? You know, if you know, Flacco was going to come in and light up the world. He's been playing great. He just got hurt or something. You know, something crazy happened earlier in the year. But it's not. He's got cement boots on. He doesn't get chased all over the field. He never moves outside of the pocket. You know, our offense is going to go nowhere unless we catch a couple lucky bombs. Mm-hmm. You know, at least let Zach scramble around and try to make something happen. Yeah. But, yeah, I understand the whole, you know, Mike White situation. All the guys are behind him. Zach's not a locker room guy. But at some point, like, let the kid fail or let him not fail. You know, don't give us all this baloney that he's back next year, so we're going to have to go through all of this again. You know, if he's going to fall flat on his face, let him finish the season. He's a number two pick. Yeah, just uh, – and, like, and, and I agree with that. Just, um, you know, one thing is um, I always – and I know we're in a new age with the quarterbacks. You know, the game is tailored so much to the offense, especially at that position. You know, I've always been a, a guy just – give a guy, like, three years – you know, rookie year is a, is a massive transition. You know, second year, you know, just you get a little improvement. You know, still some bumps in the road. But nonetheless, um, you know, just uh, it still is going to be some improvement that just needs to be made. By year three, it should be – everything should be coming into fruition for you. And that's yeah, how I would look I mean, at it. it. It's little things for him, though. Like, I'm not even – I'm not an All-American football player by any stretch. Yeah. But, like, you watch him play. No throw comes from the same arm angle. I mean, I've played shortstop my whole life. Like, there's only very few arm slots you can throw from and be accurate across the diamond. Different ball, different mechanics, but same same rules apply. Right. Like, if you're coming out all the way across, no matter where, it, you can't, it just you're not going to be accurate. And he isn't. He misses seven yard checkdowns that the average Joe could throw. Yeah. No pun intended with Joe Flacco, even though he's out, he's mid. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, just you know, and the thing is, um, and I, like, and I saw the rock bottom performance against the Jaguars on national television. The beautiful thing about national nationally televised games is that you can't hide from it. You can't you can't hide from what you see. It's not just a regional, local broadcast. National, everybody sees it. And I saw like their highlights where you know he missed uh, the blitz that was coming, didn't check out the read. You know what I'm saying? It's just a. Uh, and it's unfortunate because I know, especially it compounds the fact that that he's been poor because he's in a big market, and uh, and it's a lot of pressure. It's it's a prideful franchise, great history, you know, just with Joe Namath, of course, of course, Bill Parcells, even Rex Ryan, just and uh, it's and it's unfortunate for him, but he did a lot of this on his own because if you were a guy, to mm-hmm. me, if, if you were a guy that were struggling really bad, but if you take ownership every single day in practice, every single press conference, every single game, every single post game, what have you, if you actually take ownership into your craft, people could give more leeway to you. But the fact that he just came across so arrogant is like, no, it's, I'm not the problem. I'm not the problem. Oh, that press oh, conference, it's, that's... It's tough. It's even tough to he watch. could turn into the next Tom Brady, but that press conference will never go away. Yeah, absolutely. It it's, the enti- it's the entire... the bad. And the, and the thing is, like... and. And what you were saying about, you know, a very interesting tidbit about, you know, playing a shortstop once at, at one point, you know, the arm angles have to be consistent, and his isn't. You know, one thing I, w- I always talk about Zach Wilson, it just, this is why I say this every single year, you know, the combine, pro days, they have value, but I think they're very overrated. Because uh, they bring, to me, they bring value for, like, people just, for certain athletes to gain exposure to build their stock. But if you're looking at a pro day, if you're looking at a guy at BYU throwing, like, scrolling out with no pressure and no defensive backs to uh, anticipate against, you know, that's not really enough for me to just, uh, oh, wow. I mean, like, you can talk. And I agree, he got he, – he has arm talent. He's a, he's a talented guy. So, for but sure. it's just uh, – that doesn't really move the needle for me. That's why every year I don't know why people make the mistake of looking at a combine – even though it's an impressive physical showcase, that I don't I don't want that to be lost in my my speech right here. But that doesn't necessarily translate to a great career, much less a solid one at that. No, oh, I mean, 
every year combine guys you have freak numbers and you see them for 12 plays and they disappear i mean especially at the quarterback position i mean that you can have all the athletic talent in the world if you don't have it between your ears it doesn't matter like i mean i hate to say it because as a jet fan tom brady is i don't care where he plays i'm not rooting for him but (laughs) you know tom brady is the furthest thing from the best athlete on the field right yeah but between his ears there's nobody better I mean, Peyton Manning, same thing. Yeah, he's Peyton Manning, he's six six, and could, throw, could chuck a ball. Yeah. But it's all between his ears. All the greatest, all the best guys. I mean, not to say that Aaron Rodgers isn't like that, but mm-hmm. he's the most athlete of the elite three that I would say. Oh yeah. Have been the best in the last 15, 20 years. You know what well, I mean? Oh, well, that question. I think yeah. When you talk about Aaron, just uh, he's one of the greatest, arguably the greatest talent the position's ever seen. Um, mm-hmm. But and like, well, going back to you know uh, what you say about Peyton and Tom, just the fact. People, are, they get so caught up in what they see in the eye. You know, we're you know, many people are so visually wired. And that's why you see guys like, you know, like a John Stockton in basketball, like a Jason Witten in tight, like Emmett Smith. These guys are great at their craft, Hall of Fame, bona fide Hall of Fame players. But because they weren't like the most supremely gifted, they weren't the most physically imposing like other guys, especially they didn't have the combination of both. Uh, they were all, all, they're often overlooked and, often disrespecting a lot of a lot of people's eyes and uh but you got to have it and you got to have it between here that's at every level but especially at the international football league because these guys are so smart you have the, i'm a professional i have the time to study you i'm not a balancing football in school this is my mm-hmm. job so I, I i can devote more of my time to you so yeah i mean and, you know, and with the guys in all pro sports across the thing. Now, it's easy to say because I'm sitting here in a chair talking to you about these guys. Mm-hmm. But, you know, your job is to ready your craft all the time. Right. Yeah, so, you know, and they, you know, and like when you see guys, oh, he wasn't ready. He wasn't worked all the way back. Well, what else are you doing? Like if I have a bad month at work, you know, I tell my boss, oh, I just, I didn't have it this game, this month. <laughs> <laughs> right, I wasn't right. all the way back yet. Okay. What? <laughs> like just uh, I just did <laughs> I didn't have. It. <laughs> hey, look, listen. I mean, I want to see how that flies. <laughs> yeah, like, I can tell you how it flies. It doesn't fly very well. Exactly. High. Exactly. You know, it's just you know, it's, it's fascinating to me. I just, but yeah, um, you know, I had hinted on something that I wanted to tell you. Um, going back to what we were talking about, regardless of how, despite how promising this year was. Yet another season outside of the playoff picture, 12 years in a row. Um, you know, I was, in, I was in high school the last time they made it to the playoffs. It was the 2010 season. So I'm in my very late 20s. I'm about, I'll be 30 this year. So it's, uh, it's been a while. It really has been a while. And the thing I is, mean, what? yeah, go ahead. So I have to, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 no. This, you, you, well, remember, you, you are the star. You cut me off when you're ready. So, yes, I would have loved to make the playoffs. Coming out of the shoot the way we did, 100%. But if you told me that I would care about football week 12, 13, 14, I would have called you a liar. Mm-hmm. I mean, we won, what, six games combined over the last two years before this year? I mean, people are calling for Sally's head. I mean, I live right next to the facility. I live like five miles from Florham Park where they practice. Oh, wow. So the Jets are big around where I live. Oh, yeah. And people are calling for solace. And I'm like, are we not watching the same thing? Like, do you remember how bad we were under Adam Gase and how bad that team was when he took it over? Oh, yuck. I mean, Adam Gase just looked like he was permanently on smelling salts <laughs> on the sideline. <laughs> Sorry. Well, but by the, by the way, what did you think about that events? opening press conference, by the way? Which one, Gase? I don't know what that was. Oh, that was... I, I mean, that looked like something off Saturday Night Live. It really did. <laughs> I, I couldn't tell you what that was. And I just, you know, like, from, from that point the on... The best part I, is the, seas, the, the the Adam Gase era went worse than the press conference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <did. laughs> uh, that was tough to watch, man. And I'm not even a fan of the French. It's just like, <laughs> but it's... I just... I, it was just ominous from, from the beginning. I was like... What was that? <laughs> I, 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 no. We're not even not going to walk that <laughs> Look, line. He's in the past. We're going to keep him in the past. He's coaching high school football now for a reason. Yeah, and like, and he should he, 
You should. That's and even that's generous. Even that's just, <laughs> even that's generous. He's an offensive guru. Stop it. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's what they say about a lot of these guys who get fired. So, but you know, the Jason quarter, Garrett too. The, the, he was one of them, wasn't he? The QB whisperer. The hot <sighs> can, <laughs> the hot candidate. I could be Peyton Manning's quarterback coach, and it wouldn't have mattered. Man, this man, listen, <laughs> bro, like, Daily Dulo, you say you tore your ACL, bro. Listen, you gotta be careful out there, my guy. Like, how you feeling? Like, what? Wh- how far are you? I know you said last weekend. Just take it easy, brother. Gotta take it easy out there. I'm just glad you're here with us. You, you a trooper for coming with us to watch this show. I appreciate you. Absolutely. But yeah, just um. But yeah, look, I, I commend I commend the fight that you have in you, brother. Just watching this, uh, you, I just tell you, you just deserve so much better than what they've given you. Now I will say, and, and like, uh, and I will say this. Um, I don't know how you feel about this, uh, or Jets fans in general. Um, I really thought that Rex and Mike Tannenbaum should have been retained even back then. I think they were more than deserving of a another crack at the offense, another crack at fixing the offense, especially the quarterback position bringing the franchise to two consecutive title games in the conference after the first time in like a decade, like that they had been in the first place. And like the only the second time in like 20 or so years, I just, uh, now like the butt fumble, just that was rock bottom, you know, no pun intended, but just, and I get it. Like it was just, you know, it was, just, it was, yeah, a, that was pun intended and you know, it. <laughs> 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 yeah, just, uh, but listen, <laughs> Hey, listen, but, Hey, just got to tell you though. <laughs> I was at that game. You oh, <laughs> dude! I took my little cousin to that game on Thanksgiving. Yeah, and uh, he was probably ten, eleven at the time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we got to meet Mark Gaston all that day. Oh my God, that's awesome! That's awesome. Day started off great. Played a game of beer pong with Mark Gaston. All true story. Okay. okay um, yeah. And then. Uh, <laughs> It went downhill fast. It yeah. went downhill real fast. I remember my buddy ripped his jersey after that game. Oh. That was, which, he's not a very strong guy. It was impressive watching him do it. <laughs> but that was, that was definitely a career low light as a Jets fan. Well, I can imagine, yeah. And like, na- national television, I think, what was that, Thanksgiving night? Yeah. yeah, Thanksgiving night, oh, national yeah. TV. I, like, like we say before, like you, can't, it's hard to hide from stuff on national television. As a sports guy, it's just you when when you when you uh, lived it. I can only imagine being in that stadium when that took place. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I've been around for some beatings. Mm-hmm. That one, that was a tough one. Man, oh man, I just like. <laughs> But just yeah, like and it's yeah. meetings on yeah. away on enemy territory too, that's never fun. Yeah, oh, no, this, man. Listen, um, but just uh, what like just like for some positive, like what else, what were like the most impressive things you've seen from your franchise, your favorite team this year? Just like outside of, like the ugly quarterback situation, ugly off. I mean, because like they've done a great job in the front office. And just uh, but what what's what's uh, what's impressed you the most? I mean, they can people rag on Joe Douglas's drafting ability, mm-hmm. but when he gets it right, he gets it really right. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like not to say that you know, because I saw a list today. There was like thirteen or fourteen guys that you could just go who, <laughs> but yeah, right. but I mean, he also before the injury, Brees Hall. I mean, one guy, Sauce Gardner. Yeah. Big I mean, when he hit. gets it, I mean, Michael Carter is not a bad player. Elijah Moore had his drama, but he's not a bad player. I mean, when he gets it right, he gets it right. I think that's, you know, if we can hit, you know, in the next couple of years, you get, maybe you won't get another Sauce Gardner, some of, you know, you're not going to get a guy like that every year, but you get something similar, you know, the next couple drafts, continue to build on the young core. It's promising. People calling for the coach's head. I mean, LaFleur, all right, I'll give the, the haters LaFleur. He he's, he hasn't been great. Right, yeah. He hasn't. And, I mean, I like I said, he, you know, these guys are pros. They get paid the money to do it. But when you got, you know, couch quarterbacks being able to call the first ten plays of a game, that's a problem. 
Like if like if the normal Jet fans at a bar know what's coming on third and two, you don't think Bill Belichick's gonna know what's coming on third and two? Exactly. So predictable. Um, but like if you know the quarterback thing, how many teams in the league truly have a star quarterback? Not many. You know what I mean? So we're yeah. an average quarterback away from this season being completely different. Yeah, just uh, and and, that, and that's what's frustrating because um, they like they've uh, they've had the core, uh, especially early two thousand tens, early two thousand twenties. It's the same thing in back to back decades. It's just uh, if you if you have a a slight improvement, now I need you need the better guys to take you over the top, but sometimes you got to start somewhere, and uh, that's what that's what's been so unfortunate. Yeah, and I mean, I, we, me and a couple of buddies were actually talking about this today, just screwing around. They were like, I mean, is the Derek Carr idea, I know that's like a reach, you know, it's like a Madden thing at this point. <laughs> but like, we were talking about like, not even if he was on, comes to the team next year, like, what if Derek Carr was on our team this year? Oh, man. You know, and like, I don't think we win the Super Bowl regardless, but we're not 8-8 eight and eight right now. You know, 8-9 and nine, end of the season, like whatever it may end up being. Or seven, what are we, seven and nine? Like, you know, it might not yeah. be that. Um, I don't know the thing that I think is a big positive is, I mean, we were winning games because we were pounding the rock. Brees Hall shaped up to be everything that they said he was going to be. You know, positive is he's coming back next year. So whoever's under center, that's going to help. I mean, you got, you know, the emergence of Bam Knight, which was a pleasant surprise. Right. I mean, Michael Carter's not bad out of there, catching balls out of the backfield. We're going to be able to run the ball again. So we get a couple of more offensive linemen, give our quarterback some time. That'll only help give the guys some more room to run. The defense is the defense. That's what Solid does. So that's what we're going to be good at. Yeah. I mean, you got a guy like Sauce Gardner. Last time we had an elite defense, we had a lockdown corner. I mean, I don't think it's, you know, we have the two guys, the two cornerbacks now, they're, they're, an elite core to the two of them. You know, who would have thought DJ Reed would be as good as he was? That's why you dropped him. And just like, mm-hmm. and like, and what's okay. interesting is that, like, what you were saying about, you know, just, uh, you know, like, you, your team could pick a, your front office can pick a player. It's like, a lot of the fan base is like, who is that? And like, just stuff like that. They rag on the pick. They said the same thing about the Cowboys in the early 2010s. You know, just a lot of people want, they wanted Johnny Manziel, they wanted the flash guys, but they instead picked up, like, got, they drafted, like, Tyron Smith, Zach Martin, Travis Frederick. Like, a lot of those, two of those guys were relatively unknown, but they became the best offensive line in the sport for several years. So when you, when you, uh, actually, when you don't chase all, when you don't chase the flash guys always, and you get guys to build your offense around the quarterback, like, that's, that's how they build their success. So. I mean, Look at the left. You were just talking about the Rex Ryan era. Look how good our offensive line was. Mango, brick. I mean, I mean, you made Thomas Jones look like uh, look like Adrian Peterson first. <laughs> hey, exactly. They were I mean, spe- so dominant. You know those those years. Those you know we couldn't really score. Yeah. You know we still had the same issue offensively. So every game was exciting because. We're like, are we going to score 17 and trying to win, or are we going to squeak out a 30-pointer here somewhere? Right, exactly. Yeah, just and, and, and the thing, yeah, and it's, what's crazy is that, you know, the thing is, um, and they were competent offensively, but it just wasn't enough. They had the solid veterans like your Jericho's, your Lavernius, um, you know. Um, you just said my favorite player. <laughs> Jericho Contra. Oh, oh, I love me some Jericho Contra. Oh, I still wear his jersey to every game. Smart the man, Jericho. smart man, absolutely. I mean, just um, I was one one of the superstar type players. Like he's not the fantasy guy, but I mean, he was he was dependable for so long. Right, yeah. just uh, I love him. Yeah, and yeah, just uh, and it was uh, it was beautiful to see his career blossom. Just uh, coming from NC State, really a steady mm-hmm. guy, but just um. Yeah, it was, it was like he was one of those guys you could depend on. Like just uh, then they added Stantonio Holmes. Like I said, they had the capable guy Dustin Keller. They had capable guys on the outside. Uh, don't forget about the Dougie. We had some Braylon. We had Braylon. Braylon Edwards. Edwards for a minute. Yes, I remember. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They just had a great elite offensive line, high end running backs. 
LT came late in his career, but still productive. So, um, but you know, and Tony Rich is at fullback even. So, so it's like oh, it, he was a beast. Oh, man. savage! Oh my goodness. And we even savage. had a really good season of hard knocks. Yeah, exactly, that, which is rare, by the way. You broke the curse. You got one. I mean, let's go get very a rare. Snack. Yeah. Best line ever. <laughs> this is like and that that broke the curse hard lines curse. Like I said, yeah, they they had enough. Like um that's why I was I speak so high of Rex. I now granted they, I'm not saying he was perfect, but just uh Rex and keeping him and Tannenbaum together, I feel like that would have voted better for them long term. But even though Doug was doing an amazing job, so I can't really I, I can't really rag on his hire anyway. But, you know, just the continuity is so important. If they would have if they would they if they would have given them time offensively, that would have bowled well for him in my opinion. You know, I I respectfully disagree. Sure, yeah. I think towards the end, time, everything Tannenbaum turned to poop. Mm-hmm. Everything he touched turned to poop, and it yeah. just seemed that way. And it could be a little different for me because I'm so close to it. Like, it's all, well, you, you've seen it, so I I, re- I respect the opinion. Yeah, yeah you've um, seen it. And yeah. Rex, like the problem with the defensive mm-hmm. guys like that. I mean, there's one, you know, yes, they say defense wins championships, but if you watch football now, the teams that win score, and they score a lot. Right. You know, so when you're only scoring 22, 23 points a game, like, we maxed out. Like, we had no answer. Once Peyton Manning started scoring on us in the AFC Championship game, what's that, 09? Yep. Like, there, there was nothing we could do to answer. They're like, okay, we win if we get a stop. No one stops Peyton Manning. Not then, at least. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Well, see, and it, this is why I always say, uh, you know, the old adage, defense wins championships, like you said. I've always said all-time great defenses win championships. Mm-hmm. Like your uh, 85 Bears, you know, uh, Steel Curtain, 2000 Ravens, 2002 Buccaneers, 2013 Seahawks, 2015 Broncos. Uh, they, they win championships. Cause they were just all they were they're just on a whole nother stratosphere historically. Yeah. And even yeah. with those teams, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was agreeing with you. Yeah. And like even with those teams, a lot of those teams had the quarterbacks who had the career years. So mm-hmm. so it's just uh, not not to say they were special at the quarterback position because they weren't, but uh, they just for the most part they had like a guy that had their best season as a pro. So I always say elite deep all time great defenses won championships. Even Saxonville in 2017 didn't win. Because they didn't have enough at the quarterback position offensively, so. I mean, Trent Dilfer. That, that's, that, it. that's all I gotta say. <laughs> that's all you. All you need to say. There was like a stretch where they didn't even score a touchdown. Defense <laughs> scored for them, literally. Yeah, and again, I was. I mean, that Super Bowl was what, two thousand one? No. Yeah, two thousand season. The the actual game yeah. was in 01, but that was a two thousand season. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I'm from North Jersey, so if you're not a Jets yeah. fan, you're most likely a Giants fan. And yeah. That was brutal for everybody I was with that day. Oh, I, oh, I can imagine. I can I mean, imagine. I was probably what? I was in eighth grade that year, I think. Mm. I think 2000. I, I was in uh, first grade, I think. 2000. Yeah, 2001. Yeah, yeah first grade. Yeah. Make me feel old. Hey, not that old, brother. It's an illusion. Maybe seventh grade? <laughs> that doesn't matter. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, didn't Ray Lewis outscore the Giants by himself that game, or some crazy stat like that? I think <laughs> I think he did. Oh my god, because <laughs> it was like what thirty four seven, I think. Yeah, I think I think he made it had a pick six. Or, let me, I, I can pull it up. <laughs> I mean, I mean that was I, I mean it's not even a Jets memory, but like I remember watching that game. I don't remember non Jet games. Right. Right. Like, what do you have? Like twenty-two tackles that game, or something absurd? Because yeah, he, he was, he was Ray was defensive player of the year. So um, that season, that was first of two. If I can pull up the box scores and stuff in time, yeah. So uh, Ray Lewis, yeah, and not showing it actually. But uh, anyway, but yeah, he just, but they just dominated historically that season, and like just. Um, like the old added defense win championships. I think it's a little lazy, but that's why I say you got to specify the all time special defenses normally win championships. I mean, they oh, can, yeah. uh, and as important as defenses are, because you need it, uh, but I'd rather have the offense, because uh, especially in this day and age, because defense is not always going to have it. 
So I just need somebody who can always be a threat to score and push it in the end zone routinely. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and that's the difference. Yeah, I mean, everyone makes fun of Trent Dilfer for that Super Bowl. They also had, what's it, Jamal Lewis? Jamal Lewis. Did he have 2,000 yards that year? That was, that was a 2003 season. That was like a couple years later. I think he did have like a 1,000-yard season, though. That wasn't, it wasn't at his apex yet, but but he was he was a dog, man. He was just, uh, so 2000 season. Yeah, was, yeah, rookie season. Oh, he was a, he was a, he was uh, 1300 yards, six touchdowns. Yep, as a rookie. Good old yeah. Trent. Yeah, it's a beast, man. But just uh, it's, <laughs> it's, let me let me now that you say that, I will pull up his stats real quick. <laughs> I've looked him up fairly recently. You're gonna get a good chuckle out of him for yeah, sure. So, so 2000, Trent Dilfer, age tw- is age 28 season. Figured the ads start popping up. So he went seven and one as a starter. He started eight games. So uh, yeah, 1,502 yards passing, for 12 touchdowns and 11 interceptions. For a completion percentage of 59.3. I mean, a monkey could have quarterbacked that team. <laughs> Passer rating the seventy six point six, and the Oxford game was one hundred thirty six and a half. Look, I, I get it. He played professional football. He's a better football oh, player oh, than I could ever more dream. More than I ever exactly. Yeah, and listen, but I don't want that to get lost in translation. Put, if we're gonna talk equally, you know, about everyone equally, it didn't matter who quarterbacked that team. Yeah, listen, but just uh, but it just goes to show you, man. You just you got you, especially today. You have to have the quarterback. You gotta have that court. That's a, such a monumental difference that changes your fortunes for your team. And like I said, you know, it's the ultimate team sport. There's so many factors that go into being successful routinely, but uh, having that QB in place is a massive difference. You know, as a Saints fan, for me personally, you know, having a Drew Brees just was so paramount to their run. Just uh, even being in position to make the playoffs, winning the Super Bowl, just having like that historic run. That's a massive difference. I mean, I, I I am a big Drew Brees fan. I always yeah. enjoyed watching Drew Brees. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. I have not a bad thing to say about him. I really don't. Oh, yeah. Love you bring him. up the other guy that played in the cold place for a long time, I have a lot to say about him. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about him all day, too. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to, real quick, um, I wanted to get your take on the, real quick on the uh, college football national championship, the playoff rounds. Um. For, I want to ask you two questions about it. What were your takes about the semifinal and, like, this championship game preview? And, like, you had said something interesting to me earlier just uh, uh, a few days ago. said the system is broken. And I also wanted to take, uh, get your thoughts on that as well. Just So what were your thoughts about, you know, the games itself first? So my thing is, I mean, it's hard with football. I will, re- I will say it. it's hard with football because you only play one play costs like 12 games. Something yeah. along those lines, usually. 12 regular season games, yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, a loss is a big deal when teams Massive. don't lose a lot. Yeah. And Massive. I get it. But picking the four best teams out of that giant pool. Yes. Like. I agree. You had a legit argument for seven, eight teams this year. Hmm. You know? And I know it's hard because everything, like, one, you don't want the kids to get hurt playing extra games. Mm-hmm. But, like, you don't need those two, I don't even know what to call them, games in the beginning of the year. Like, Alabama plays Northwest Alcorn State. Like, you don't need that game. <laughs> yeah, I you agree. know, so expand it. Give it eight. I mean, there's always going to be people like, oh, if it's eight, why can't it be ten? My team's almost. But, I mean, you're telling me that, like, a team like Alabama – you know, there's you know three, four teams outside that if they played against Georgia or any of the other two, or Ohio State, they could have beat those teams too. And I feel like you just picking four, it's like, you know, you yeah, don't I really know. know. But I will say, watching Ohio State lose in the fashion that they did. Oh, what's up? Oh, I enjoyed it. I really did. <laughs> I did. Uh, I went to school in Pennsylvania. I did not go to Penn State, but, you know. I kind of started pl- rooted for them as soon as I got to college because that's who all my friends rooted for. Yeah. I never really had a dog in the fight being from Jersey. I mean, right, right. Yeah. you know, it's not our thing here. We have two, I have a pro football team 10 minutes from where I grew up. Yeah. 
hey, this I did not need it. Absolutely. I respect yeah, you. And, uh, and I have a strong disdain for Ohio State football, so that was – yeah, my, that was nice. Yeah, my best friend, he he's actually a Buckeyes guy. I know he's out of town, so um, you know, I haven't gotten the chance to talk to him about the game, but just you know he wasn't I, I know he wasn't happy. And like I have a coworker, he's a big Georgia fan, so you know, he <laughs> he he was ecstatic. You know, he he was ecstatic about it, man. Just you know. But yeah, yeah my only last thing about the reason I think it's broken is um like I told you earlier, like I wrestled in college. Right. That was the sport I played, or whatever you want to call it. And um, you know, we're going to save the best for last, too, brother. I was talking about that wrestling. Save the best for last. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, just, but, like, my thing is, for the national tournament, they have, you know, I think it's, like, 32 or 26 guys now. Mm -hmm. Like, not saying that you need that many football teams. Right. But something insane happens in at least one or two weight classes every year. Because you allow the guys that are right there to make it to the tournament. And I think... College football should have something similar, maybe not sixteen games like D three has, but or D one double A has yeah. or whatever it is. But like, y you have teams that compete. Let them compete. Yeah, yeah. See, like, and, and like, I was saying this a few weeks ago on the show. Just, um, I don't like like just the guinea pig mindset about the experiment. Just, oh, we're just gonna do four teams right now. I say you go all out early, mm -hmm. and like, because my thing is, people say, oh, it's too much. You're gonna watch anyway. You yeah, gonna, you're gonna mean, watch regardless. You're gonna make, and the truth is, you're gonna make more money on more money, uh, yeah. Like, uh, like a quarterfinal game if you have eight guy, if you have eight teams, because mm -hmm. everyone's gonna want to watch. Then it's just an extra week of people tuning in for like the final four they have now. Yeah, and and the thing is, uh, and and I be, I'm even more comfortable saying that now and confident because uh, nil nil because the players are finally getting paid, much deserved pay, just uh because it's been long overdue. So like I'm not. A, even though the injury concern is always going to be there, just at least a lot of these guys are getting compensated in some in some yeah. capacity. I so, mean, the NIL stuff. And um, I know, it's, and I know, it's it's not buttoned up. It is not buttoned it up by the means. It is far yeah. from it. Man. Yeah. It is far from it. And I'm all for, you know, especially like I played a low budget sport. I understand that, but even like the guys that bring in the money, the football players, they have video games. They always have. They should get something for their likeness. Oh, without question. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Without question. But these NIL deals, it's the wild, wild west. And that's something I think they rolled out too soon. Just because people were complaining about it. Which they weren't wrong to. Right, but, so. I mean, it's essentially like, alright, come on. We have this sponsor who owns Joe Blow's Tires down the road. will give you a hundred grand if you come here. Like, it's that's essentially what it's, gonna, that's what it's becoming. And that... In the kid, you need to realize, and as someone who got hurt, wrestling, like playing their sport, without my education, there's nothing else. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like again, granted, I'm not an elite D1 quarterback or X Y Z, but if you're telling me, oh, I got a million dollars in NIL stuff in college, you get it at 18 years old, you're going to really survive the rest of your life with your million-dollar NIL deal and no degree if, God forbid, something were to happen. Right, it's right. a lot more difficult to do so. Oh, without question, yeah. I can imagine. I mean, you know, just and, and the thing is, it's just, um, and a lot of people say, oh, well, it's not as popular. Listen, I mean, you're still contributing to the school in, in that capacity, and you should, you're more yeah. than worth getting that money, especially up no in northern schools. Like hockey and rest, like those are more, far more prominent. So that mm -hmm. that should drive up the value anyway. Yeah, and it's just you know my thing is I want these kids to get what they deserve. Don't uh, absolutely the NCAA and colleges make millions upon millions of dollars off these kids. Absolutely, yeah. but to turn it into like the highest bidder kind of deal, which is what you tried to avoid with all the boosters for all these years. Mm -hmm. I mean, you took a step forward to take two steps back. That's just how I feel. Right. Yeah. And like I said, uh, it, it, it has some, you know, and, uh, it's a lot of work that needs to be done with that. Um, but like I said, it is broken. Uh, just, you know, just it, they got to move in a di different direction. I'm just glad that they took that, finally took that step to pay them. But it's, it's not enough. It's just uh, they have a lot of work to do. Um, I want to talk, uh, 
want to move on to, to our Yankees. You know, this I've been waiting on this one for a minute. I've been waiting for this. The Jets are depressing. Let's, <laughs> Look, let's, 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 let's well with the switch up the top. Thirty man. minutes talking about misery. Let's, let's, let's listen. You gotta add, you gotta add it with the piece. You gotta fi- finalize it with the piece. So you know, it's all it's all purpose. Look, look. To get to the sunshine, you gotta go through the storm. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go through the storm. But yeah, I just want to um, first question about our Yankees, brother. Where were you when Judge signed the deal? What were you doing when he signed the deal? <laughs> <laughs> the truth. The truth. Yeah. I was sitting on the toilet. <laughs> That's the truth. Um, no, it wasn't. I was about to. I was. I was about to hop in the shower. Truth. No, but, I, guess, um, I, guess. <laughs> I, I was like, one, I was like, that is a buttload of money. But yeah, I yeah. will stand by what I said the fur, when he said we're not negotiating once the season starts mm-hmm. and they didn't get a deal done. I was like, this dude's going to either make no money or a buttload of money. Yeah, right. And yeah. he bet on himself. And I like to pride myself on having, on having cojones. Yeah, that is a whole nother level of believing in yourself. Oh, it that's going to be a, one of the all time betting stories. Like not not because like talk about gambling, just betting on like just with the confidence of yourself. You know, like it was, and I want to ask you that first because obviously you know that's our guy. But you know, we had talked about this back in November, and we were talking about uh, you had asked me about the over under regarding it to his deal, and I remember telling you. Um, I said two, two years, for 50. Two, two for 50, 50 total, be- only because of the short contract history, even though he was betting on himself and uh, and just another playoff disappointment. I was like, especially since that came into fruition, like, does he really want to stay here with that? Just uh, you were being disrespected by the front office. The team fell short after such a blazing start because they just were not the same after the All-Star break. It was such a nosedive. And I was just disappointed in itself. But just uh, that's why that's the only reason I said two years fifty total because the short contract. So, but you had called it. You said sixty eight years, forty million. Yeah. You called it perfectly. The forty million just felt like the right number. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah, someone you were gonna have to pay him if you wanted him. Mm-hmm. You knew that. You know, I would have rather give him. You know, not that it's my money again. But, like, he wanted the years. I don't know what the obsession with the years is. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I get it. It's an extra baseball contract are guaranteed. He's getting that money no matter what. But, I mean, that's a long time. If he gives us five, six good years, um, what are you going to do? Hey, you know, and, and he other, deserved it. There's other things that that team needs. Yeah, you know, and Aaron Judge is one of them. I mean, he, he like they were he, the media. He was getting booed at Yankee Stadium. Man, you're telling me if Derek Jeter hit like that in the playoffs, that they wouldn't have booed. We wouldn't have booed him too. It's New York. <laughs> Dude, I mean, this is what you sign up for coming here. You haven't been to the Garden for a Knicks game. Like, give her, like, come on. He knows that. Aaron Judge knows that. You yeah, know, you're you, not you, gonna get butt hurt because you got booed. You hit 60 home runs. You're one of the greatest hitters in Yankee. You had one of the greatest seasons in history. Like, come on. Sixty plus homers is is you not there's not go, there's not too many seasons that you ever see like that, and like that's why and just it was such a fast it was such a joy to watch him because he did it the right he did it the right way, was it wasn't a jerk on the field or off the field, he, he represents the franchise well re- represents the world of sports very well, and like I, I, I felt for him the last twenty games of the year because you could see it pre- he was pressing. Oh yeah, yeah. You could see it, and you're like, I'm like, yeah, you're making a lot of money playing this game, but like, I, I like, I, we don't know what he's going through, but you know that mental state. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're like, yeah. man, I just got to get this over with. You know, yeah, just, and he uh, did. Yeah. You know, he did. God bless it. And that was it. Was a hell of a thing to see as a Yankee fan. But with yeah, that right. being said, just, what um, else do you think we need here? Because let's see if we're on the same page with what we need to fix on this team. Yeah, so like, but and like the thing is, uh, you know, you said we had a lot of holes to fill, so they we did pick up Carlos, six year, one sixty two, mm-hmm. from uh, just one year stay in San Fran, add another, mm-hmm. add another player to that rotation. Just what, what were your thoughts about that? I, I mean, you can never, to me, you can never have too much pitching in baseball. It's a defensive game. Just like you gotta have, you gotta have the aces. I mean, 
I love it. Yeah. I mean, you don't know how the the the, the catch twenty two with all of everything that's specific to New York and mm-hmm. more so than anywhere else. This guy could have been. He, he had a great year. You know, he's been great, but he's been great everywhere but New York. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And it sounds cliche, but it's not. New York does things to people. So do I love the contract before seeing him pitch as a Yankee? I love it. Will I love it in eight months? We'll see. Right, You know, because yeah. New York eats people up. Notorious. It eats people up. And I never judge a contract until I see the player play anymore because you can't. Hey, just like, it's a business. You got to pay him, like, Technically no, but you but you know what I'm talking about. Just uh, it's yeah. you gonna pay I, for I, free. I'm more concerned about as a Yankee fan like yourself. You understand we were blessed with Mariano Rivera. Oh, class act, yeah. Blessed. Yeah. I mean, on and off the field, but we knew, except for the World Series that we dare not mention with uh, the Diamondbacks. You know, I'm talking about that. That's his blemish. Yeah. But. You know, the whole world's like, why are you pulling the infield in? You know, Luis Gonzalez just got to hit a flare, and he hits a flare over Jeter's head. The whole world knew it was coming. And, but anyway. Just like, I mean, they were, even with that, just uh, that wasn't the ideal move, obviously. They, it was so tough to hit against two Hall of Fame pitchers. They were lights out like no other. Yeah, but, but I mean, anyway, we were blessed yeah. Mar- <laughs> we Mariano Rivera. So we yeah. knew if we got to the ninth inning with one run, the game was over. You know, we'll never get that again, mm-hmm. but we need an anchor yes. in the back end of the bullpen. You know, and Garrett Cole's only one person. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but Cole, yeah. yes, Garrett Cole is amazing. He, yeah, exactly. I mean, what do you have? He had an absurd number of strikeouts again this year, but he has the long ball problem. Yeah. I mean... His fastball, when it's flat, it is it, flat. When he on, he on. And it, you know, but that's the catch, and yeah. tends he has a little bit of judge syndrome when he since he's been with us in the playoffs. You know, it's not a guarantee. You know, he's not. I mean, I hate to say it, but Verlander, you know what you're going to get out of him in the playoffs. You know, and Cole's not like that, not yet. Yeah, just, but I mean, uh, if we're going to celebrate any franchise that I'm a fan of at this point, it's absolutely the Yankees. I mean, <laughs> they haven't won a World Series. It hurts. It sucks. But it's been a while. We've been good a long time. See, like it, like but I I can appreciate that because we've been steady. We haven't been at the bottom. We have been in the valley. Underachieved, yes, but mm-hmm. they've been in the conversation for the division title, and we just but we just can't finish it off. Can't finish it the postseason. Yeah. You can't finish it off, but you know that's us also being spoiled Yankee fans. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I saw it was, I mean, five championships by the time I was 22. Yes, hey. Like, I mean, you're not, not, I mean, you have teams that just want to make the playoffs, let alone see five World Series. Yeah. I mean, you got to be realistic. There's other teams with world class players. I mean, would I like to win another one? Absolutely. But I mean, we're good every year. Every year we could have the same talk at, when pitchers and catchers report, we can win a World Series this year. Every year. Yeah, just not many franchises can say that. I mean, at least, and the thing is, like, but and what people, what annoys me about a lot of fan, a lot of football, baseball fans when they talk about the Yankees, they always go back to, well, you know, you buy all your players. Yada, yada. Listen, core four was like you. You have to raise them up in the farm system. All their core guys were raised in in house. You can talk. You can say what you want about like. We signed a rod and like listen. You got to get build it in house. Beautiful thing about baseball is the elite farming system. That's how you get your players, mm-hmm. and that's what they did in the two thousand late early not mid to mid nineties to two thousand. That's what they has. That's how they dominated. I hate the a rod argument for one reason. Yeah. We did we need a rod to win that World Series a hundred percent. Yes. Hundred percent. But he wanted to be here. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That says something. He moved. At the time when he signed, he was the better shortstop than Derek Jeter. I'll just say it. Oh, beast. You know what I mean? Like, he was the better player. And he was like, you know what? Nope. If that's what I got to do to play in New York, that's what I got to do. Yes, we were going to pay him the money. But he still had a, for 10 years, play a position he didn't play. Because, like you said, he wanted you know? to be here. Like, and yeah. it, like, you can't fault the guy for wanting to be here. 
that's the most storied franchise in the history of sports. So it's like, you know? like I can't fault a guy for wanting to play in New York. I don't care what a, no. fa- a basic fan says. You know, and you know the old, my biggest gripe with the Yankees is the new stadium. I'll be honest with you. Oh my God, Max said the same thing three weeks ago. He said the same thing. Ugh. Oh, I, you know, it's, it, because if you grew up going to the Bronx and playing watching games at the old Yankee Stadium, I mean, I was at multiple playoff games there, ALCS championship games. The stadium shook. Was it the safest thing in the world? Probably not. <laughs> when you walked into that place, it was just, Royalty, you man. felt like you were somewhere that yes, yeah. was otherworldly. Right, right. Now you walk into the new one, it looks, it's kind of like MetLife. It's like a Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, about uh, the dollar, about the dollar, and they said, and like, and you have, and I, I totally understand where you come from. See, I'm not from the area, so like, and I'm a huge fan. Just, but see, you have a greater appreciation for the past like that, because my my guy Max said the exact same thing. Because like, even when you go to like, a lot of people talk about the Miami Hurricanes, they talk about Sun Life Stadium, but it's not the Orange Bowl. Yeah, exactly. It's like, like just like with the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Jerry World is a beautiful place. AT and T Stadium is, is one of the more spectacle, beautiful spectacles ever. It's not Texas Stadium. Even with Pittsburgh fans, Pittsburgh Steelers fans, high, well, it's not Heinz Field anymore. But I forgot what it's called now. But it's yeah. not, it's not th- th- um, Three River Stadium. I'm trying to remember the name. But yeah, just you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it, it's 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 the only place that I can say in the sports world, at least, that I've been where like. When you were there, you felt like you were somewhere special. Yeah. Museum. Yeah, you really did. And, uh, you know, I was, I mean, I've been to, you know, big playoff games at the new stadium, too. Yeah, they're still fun. It's New York. It's the Yankees. You know, it's it's fall baseball. It's great, but it's not the same. It's just not. Right. And a lot of the young, like, younger people I talk to, they're like, you're just getting old, and that's how you... Like, <sighs> it's not it. I swear it's not it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and, but like, based the beautiful thing about the sport was its history. Now, like, you know, there's some aspects they need to get, they need to update the game because it's not what it used to be. But as far as like just the artifact, just I mean, I I I can get behind that. That's uh-huh. what made the game special. Yeah. The game, the, the game itself is so so old. It, it's like it, here's the thing: by 1950, it was like in 1950. Uh, the NFL was only 30 years old. And at 1950, the NBA was only three years old. Baseball supersedes all of that by age. Mm-hmm. It's like that was, that's, that's America's pastime for a reason. Yeah. And I understand the game's slow for some people. But, you know, I always find that the people who don't, in, uh, like, don't enjoy the game are people who never really played the game. Right, you know, know, because there's a cerebral understanding of it where it's not just pitcher, throw ball, batter, hit ball, run around bases. You know, if you watch, like you see a shortstop move behind a pitcher, he's not just moving because his legs are falling asleep. You know, he knows what pitch he's throwing. He knows what the hitter's tendencies are. You know, everything's set up for every pitch. It shouldn't take as long as it takes to throw every pitch. But it's so much more than people really give it credit for. Yeah, it's, it's that's why it's a harder sport. You know, Deion Sanders said it's a harder sport because I, when you can, you can make million like three hundred million dollars, batting three out of ten, you got to be in the least. That, that's a hard sport. Yeah, and I mean, and anyone who says baseball hitting a baseball is not, so. It's not the hardest, like physically hardest thing to do. That's and that's it's what they the look most, at. It's the most difficult. Tactically speaking, it's the most di- like people, but but people get caught up in the eye, like oh, well, you're not hitting people on Sunday, no. But it's tactically speaking, it's the most technically speaking. Yes, it's it's difficult. Like, like the average person, like just average Joe off the street, mediocre athlete, is more likely to tackle an NFL player than hit than hit a major league fence ball. Without question, yes. You know what I mean? You could trip somebody and they could get tackled. <laughs> exactly. You know, you're not just gonna stick your bat out and pray. It doesn't work that way. See, like you bat like bat thirty percent, but like if a quarterback goes out and throws for thirty percent of the, completes thirty percent of the passes, he's gonna get ragged on all day. 
regardless, that's regardless, true. regardless of the situation. So it's just it, that what people are going to talk about that. So don't tell me that baseball is because and like because people what they allow is the uh, the fatigue of baseball, the the quote unquote boring nature of it. They it usurps the the actual facts of the game. Mm-hmm. So it's just and that's how that's the sad reality. And like and like it's not a per it's not what it once was. It as a spectacle for a lot of people. It's, it's not what it once was. I and I get that. And it has work to do. And sh- strikeouts are also killing the game. Yeah, it, without question, it's a pitcher's game. You know, I mean, Tony Gwynn struck out. I think what is it, like crazy stat like Ariel struck out more times last season than Gwynn in his whole career. Yeah, so like there was a crazy stat on him. Um, he had more like. Four hit games and three strikeout games. Mm-hmm. That's that's a generation like he's a, a all time special guy. Yeah, and he played in there with like a lot of great pitchers. I mean, you don't see a Gwyn like that approach anymore. Gwyn. I mean, if you go back and watch old videos of like Rod Carew, yeah, guys, Pete Rose, guys trying to just gap the ball, not trying to hit the cover off of it. Without question, you know. And you're a Yankee fan, so you remember Mark Teixeira in Texas. Then yes. when he came to New York, how much oh. of a different hitter was that? I mean, he hit three hundred the year before he got to us. Then he hit two twenty. It's 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 hard. It's like and people don't people don't give it credit for how difficult the game is. There, yes, there are some all time special guys, but just for the translate from uh, culture to culture is it, it, it just compounds the situation. I mean, I'll tell you a real quick funny story. So I went to Seton Hall Prep in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. We're a perennial national baseball power. My f- I came back to try out my junior year, and we had this freshman pitching. Right. And you know when you watch a guy who has it, the ball just leaves their hand different. Right. It moves different. And I was like, oh, he's pretty good. I wonder what position he plays. Like, oh, he pitches <laughs> and plays shortstop. I was like, I decided that day that I was done playing baseball and never played again <laughs> at school. Um, and that player was Rick Porcello. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I was like, and, you know, my dad's like, you really just, you know, my dad was a wrestling guy. He was like, you really just going to quit? Is he that good? I was like, one, I didn't play last year because I was wrestling in this third baseball. I was like, and two, you have not seen what I just saw. Yeah. Special talent, yes. And then when he won the Cy Young, my old man called me. He was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> it's, like you, it's like you were right 15 years ago I told you man <laughs> like, it's like it's um, but just, but like you but see when you because you played and you've been around you could see that you could identify that much quicker than a lot of people can so a lot of people just talk off the rip and they don't understand what's going on see and that's what separates you from a lot of people I mean, Trouble with the Curve has its own damn movie for a reason. <laughs> I mean, the movie stunk, but there's that's you know what I mean. Yeah, oh yeah. Hitting the curveball is an art form. Oh yeah. One last thing, brother. Like before we end, um, what's one thing you want people to know about wrestling, college wrestling? That like so, like yeah. the, the, if if this is the only time you could talk about it ever, what's one thing they need to go take away with? It is now. We were just talked about difficult hitting a baseball. Mm-hmm. The hardest sport in the world is wrestling. Right. Um, it is an all year round thing. You have to to be good at it. You have to breathe it, eat it, sleep it. Oh yeah. Um, and these guys do ten times more than just about any other sport while trying to lose weight and make their weight. Um, and if you just look at it and you're like, I don't know the rules. I'm just going to keep going. Don't sit there and watch it for a minute because it's an art form when done well. And people are willing to give American soccer a chance where we perennially suck at soccer. Yes. But our U S men's wrestling team has won the world, like the wrestling world cup, two of the last three years. You know I mean we're we are one of the best wrestling countries in the world every year, and it's exciting if you give it a shot. Yeah. And I mean, I'm from Jersey. 
the best wrestler, in my opinion, in American history is Jordan Burroughs. He's our age. Yep. He's, he's my age. He's 35, still winning world championships, making history. Helen Maroulis on the women's side in the last Olympics, not this past Olympics, the one before that, she beat a girl from China who was a 10-time world and Olympic gold medalist, the most decorated wrestler in history, men or women's. And she beat her in her last Olympics. I mean, the world of wrestling in America is, it's growing, thankfully. But it is one of our more elite sports in the country. Just no, it's so niche no one wants to give it a shot. Yeah, and, and like, that's, and that's what, what was the uh, fascinating thing about just, um, you know, Amer- in, a, in the United States, it's just so dominated by three sports historically. It's just, um, you, we uh, don't, we take for granted a lot of these athletes when we shouldn't. I understand, like, it's culturally, you know, it's uh, birthed in different countries. I understand that. But, you know, just, um, like, it's just so much talent out there. We have so much talent in this country. Like, I went to a high school that prided itself. We, my high school was an all-time elite in track and field, um, really solid in baseball uh, and wrestling. So that was, like, our peak sports. Football as well, great, too. But wrestling was one of our, was one of our top, top sports. Yeah, and I mean, you watch, because it's funny, because no one will watch, people don't want to watch wrestling, but they'll watch UFC, uh, where, like, John Jones, Daniel Cormier, Henry Cejudo, have the, roots. the elite of the elite, they're wrestlers long before yeah, they ever step in an octagon. It comes back to the roots. And there's a reason. But see, they, but they got a big cage, and like, you got the personality and stuff, but it, it's, a, it's a, just a spectacle to a lot of people, and that's the problem. Uh, yeah. For sure, for sure. But I'm saying my point is that yeah. the elite of the elite are wrestlers in this in that sport. So wouldn't you want to at least be a little bit curious about why so many wrestlers are so good at this at mixed martial arts? Just at least go back to the basics. Step back. Give it a step back. But yeah, that's that's my that's my soapbox on my favorite sport. All right, brother. And we like and we we gonna have a like a separate talk about that as well. I just want to, I just want to tell you uh, thank you so much for your time and long overdue. Thanks for having me, man. You guys, it's been a blast, brother. I appreciate your time, homie. Appreciate you too. Be good. All right, you too, brother. You be safe. You guys have a blessed night. You too. Talk to you later. All right, later, brother.